Does this ever happen to you? Computers are just so hard to use when they're on fire. But no worries, I can just use my laptop instead. Oh no, not again, what a coincidence. There must be some computer I can use. Uh, no, don't, don't look at those, I don't have those. Enterprise grade server. The obvious solution to this very common and relatable issue. Last time you guys saw this thing, it had a gaming graphics card hanging out at the top of it, which as many of you pointed out, it's not really a good idea to run a server like this without the lid on it, because it completely defeats the way the cooling setup's supposed to work. Now, we can't just get rid of the graphics card because not even Windows will run properly, let alone 3D rendering or video editing. So if we want to test those things as a desktop computer at my desk, we need to fit a graphics card on the inside and still have the lid closed. Luckily, I actually had one of you guys, a viewer reached out to me asking me if I wanted some of their old server hardware. And they sent me a Quadro P1000, a RAM upgrade, and some extra hard drives for storage. Let's put that stuff in. The current setup has 96 gigabytes of RAM here, and I'm adding four more sticks to total this up to 160 gigabytes. I don't have a specific reason to need this much RAM, but if I have it, I might as well put it in here. Plus, it'll be pretty cool to see Windows reporting 160 gigs of RAM. And our GPU will go in this slot here, but not with a half height bracket, so I downloaded a full size one, and that made it fit better. With our server all together and hopefully functional, what does it need to do to be considered a capable desktop computer? Well, for starters, I think it should run OBS Studio. Any modern computer should be able to record its own desktop. And then like video editing, can it do 1080p? Can it do 4K? We're gonna test that in DaVinci Resolve and maybe some photo stuff in Affinity Photo. And then basic stuff, it should be able to use a web browser, YouTube at 1080p, and like, I'd be surprised if it can't run Google Docs, but we're gonna test it anyway. Trying to set this thing up at my desk definitely had some logistical issues. These things aren't exactly computer shaped, but once you get your second power cable plugged in, you can try to turn it on and have it do nothing. I don't know if there's a way to change this, but by default, the BIOS does not output to the GPU just to the built-in VGA output. No worries though, you can just wait for Windows to load. And then when it doesn't, move the entire setup to somewhere else where you can have a second monitor for the VGA. And it also does this sometimes, but if you manage to turn it on and wait about five minutes for it to configure memory, sort out the HBA and network interface, and then initialize UEFI and have it successfully boot and switch the GPU, this is a working Windows computer with 12 CPU cores and 160 gigabytes of RAM. If any other computer took five entire minutes to boot off of an SSD, I would consider that thing broken. Anyway, let's get on to our checklist. If you can see this, that means OBS Studio is working, recording 1080p 30fps using NVIDIA's NVENC encoder. So that's not using much CPU power here because it's all getting done on that Quadro P1000. And while we're in Task Manager here, there is our 160 gigabytes of DDR3 at 1600 megahertz. It's not very fast. Moving on to basic computer stuff, loading up Firefox, I'm gonna go to YouTube and see if it plays properly. Sure, let's watch one hour of incredible 4K path tracing 5090 gameplay. We're watching in 1080p 60 and we're not dropping any frames. That totally works fine. Can we do 4K? Yes, full screen. Okay, this monitor is not 4K, but YouTube playback in 4K, no frames drop. That works totally fine. That's pretty cool. Apparently I'm not signed into Google Docs, but that was going to work fine. Just count it as good. All right, let's edit a video in DaVinci Resolve. This project is only 1080p, so if anything works, it's gonna be this. That's not off to a very good start. I changed the GPU mode from OpenGL to CUDA and that seemed to kind of fix everything. Playback is totally fine on here, 30 FPS. Uh, scrubbing around is pretty smooth, as smooth as Resolve ever is. I'd say just mousing around and moving some stuff, copying stuff, playing back the video. I could edit a video on here, no problem. Let's try 4K. Server unboxing, this project should be 4K. It's struggling a lot more with this. If I just let it play back the video, it's hitting 30 FPS, but if I come through here, it's lagging pretty bad. 
and if I play one of these heavier sections, it'll drop out of the 30 FPS lock every once in a while. If I quickly jump to a different spot, you can see the FPS thing fluctuate like crazy before it locks in, if it even locks in. Sometimes it takes a bit. Like right here, this is only playing at 21 FPS. It, it's noticeably not good. Now there it was reporting that the FPS was solid, but it definitely wasn't. 4K video editing is probably not really a good idea on here. Technically, you could probably get a project done, but it's not gonna be a smooth experience. And yeah, scrubbing through this, how long does it take for it to actually go to that point? That's not very good. Well, I guess technically we still have to call that a pass because it worked in 1080p and that was our goal. I don't know, we'll make this one yellow. Changing things up, Autodesk Fusion 360. This is the software I would use if I was gonna 3D print something, for example. And it's not too hard on computers, but I don't know, we'll see. Well, if you need to do some 3D design and all you have is a server, you should have no problems. This is honestly totally smooth on here. I'd have no problems using this. Where's my affinity photo? Let's try and load up a thumbnail. Ah, yes, graphic design is my passion. Nothing about this doesn't work. I think I can honestly say I would have no problems using this. This is only a 1080p file, so it'll probably struggle a bit more doing something heavier, but I can make some text here. That looks fine. Yeah, it'd be fine. Using the color development tab thing, the performance is definitely less than I'm used to expecting this program, but nothing that would prevent me from using it. I'm gonna give Affinity Photo a pass. Well, that's pretty much everything I would need to work on my desktop computer. Well, the performance is definitely not as good as my desktop computer. This thing's also from 2009, so I can't really complain that much. Everything that I needed to do, it would have been able to do, just a little bit worse. So no, you probably don't wanna get one of these things if you need a desktop computer. I mean, the form factor alone and how loud it is, it's pretty impractical, but yeah, if you needed to use one in a pinch, it would work. Well, I think that's pretty much it for this experiment. If you wanna see me play games on this thing, I've done a video about that too. And yeah, get subscribed. I'll see you later. Bye.